If this seems like an uncharacteristic slip-up, not a bit of it. Despite some of the best technical teams in the world, a live event as huge as Eurovision is enough to send even the most experienced TV professionals into a cold sweat. And when the UK hosted in 1977, things were made even more complicated because the country was gripped by widespread industrial action, which meant that the BBC camera crews and technicians were on strike. This industrial action actually had an effect on the Eurovision Song Contest itself because the BBC couldn't guarantee that it would go ahead. At the time, this was the closest the contest ever came to being cancelled. There were calls for the Netherlands to step in and host, but their camera crews refused in solidarity with their British counterparts, and the contest was finally held in the UK five weeks later than originally planned. The UK song that year saw Lindsay DePaul and Mike Moran's dueling pianos directly commenting on the melancholic state of the nation. Where are we? Rock Tragedies. We got a remedy. Why don't we rub, rub it out and start it again? again? It was sort of reflecting on the industrial problems of the time. Um, and when we first heard it, it was, oh, that's quite brave, because... Everything else was a bit happy-clappy and jolly and smiley. Rock Bottom had been the pre-contest favourite, but it finished runner-up to France on the night, and it hadn't had the full backing of anti Beeb. Over 40 years later, secret internal memos were unearthed that revealed the shocking truth. In 2009, documents were released from a BBC meeting which showed that they were actually relieved that the UK hadn't won. In 1977, they definitely didn't want to host Eurovision again. It was a costly event. According to the minutes of a meeting of the BBC governors, when it seemed that the UK would win the contest and have to pay for it again in 1978, BBC faces at Wembley had grown longer and longer. Another governor said the whole occasion had been one of grasping vulgarity that he could not bear to watch. And a further blow occurred for the already stressed production team in 1977 when the postcard films, played to viewers between the musical acts, were censored by the BBC due to international outrage. The night before Eurovision, there was a party for all the people who were taking part. And uh, it fell to me to go along to this party with a camera crew and I made little films of each nation enjoying themselves, spent all night long editing it and the following day. A few of the countries objected because some of their contestants appearing uh, appeared to be slightly drunk and they decided they would not show these postcards. But losing the postcard films caused a real headache for the director when it came to seamlessly covering the scene changes. The postcards that were played uh, between each act was to enable the scene crew to change any drum kits, pianos, etc., for the artists to get off stage, to mics to be reset, uh, cameras to get into their new positions. So there was a lot of activity behind the scenes during this 30 seconds. The only alternative uh, was just to show members of the audience sitting there. Where he would have had these jolly little vignettes, he ended up having pans across board audience members. I think you'll find this a, a good one too, although as far as I can make out, not fancied in the bookmakers running. My job along with the rest of the sound team, was to put all the mics out ready for the next act. And Pete Murray was the commentator at the time. And he would run out of words if we weren't very careful. He has a stack of hits to his name, Luigi Albertini. The composer is Salvatore Fabrizio, and he's won the Venice... Poor Pete didn't run out of steam altogether, but even his lesson in pronunciation couldn't liven up this particularly bleak state of affairs. Look at him. One thing I do remember quite clearly is the director's encouragement for us to get a move on. 